When I think of social media and anxiety, I mean, holy moly, that's like a loaded question. Personally, what's affected my anxiety the most is the, the amount of negativity that I see. There's just literally too much. Like, I find that the more I'm looking at a screen, the more detached I feel with my own body or to like what's happening right in front of me. My relationship with social media is, you know, a bit addictive right now, which I don't like, and I'm not proud to say that, but I also feel like that's something that probably most of us can relate to. Like, I don't like that I feel the need to have social media in the first place. There really is like no escaping it. There's plenty of research out there that really demonstrates that uh, social media acts very much like an addiction. It stimulates the same part of the brain as substance use. Mm. So when you think about it, you are always looking for that positive reinforcement. Right. The idea of what could happen, whether you're gonna get a like or whether get, you know somebody's gonna repost you, really keeps you coming back very much like an addiction. Right. I don't know, is that something just as society we're conditioned from like a very young age to like feel like we need that validation? That sense of not getting that enough positive reinforcement from our home environment, not feeling rooted, mm. allows us to really look outside of ourselves for a right. our reward. And I think that social media really pulls for that. It's so interesting that you say that because a lot of the feedback, if, if it is negative, that I've ever gotten is like, oh, you're setting a bad example, or this is horrible, that I wouldn't want my kid to see this, or... What do you think when, when parents say, for example, to you, when they say, you know, you're setting a bad example for my kids? I don't know how much you know about my family or us, but there's, there's an assumption of the kind of people that we are or who we are mm -hmm. that I could say pretty confidently is pretty inaccurate. Mm -hmm, I mean, I, I, mm -hmm. we have a reality TV show, so sure. a lot of people know a Keeping lot of our lives, yes. but I think that there's still such a lack of actually knowing our character, who right. we are. When you think about even, even a reality show is going to show the highlights of your right. life, right? And when somebody really thinks about like keeping up, mm -hmm. how do you keep up with the Kardashians, right? right? It, it, it is obviously either can be used as a motivation mm. to be your very best, mm. or it can be used as an impossibility. If right. somebody's really struggling with identity issues right. and with confidence issues, the idea of keeping up with this image of somebody mm. that you admire may really seem impossible. Mm. And perhaps that's part of the sort of rationale right. as to why for some folks, right. you know. It... You can check me, by the way. You can totally <laughs> sit here and be like, mm-mm, this, this is what people think. Can you give me an example of a time where you kind of have like would highlight a, a peak moment of anxiety that is related to social media for you? Something that like boils my blood, that like really frustrates me and like I think upsets me the most is when it's someone claiming a false narrative for me. The internet, I guess, bases things off of such small moments. Yes with no context. Right. They don't know the before or the after, right. and they'll take that and run with it and then completely judge you based off of this one little thing. Well, that's the thing. I think there's a certain loss of control of your own sense of self. And, right. and I think that people can kind of edit it mm. to their own, to fit their own purpose right. and to fit their own sense of uh, reality mm. or lack of reality. Mm. And then you just become like a canvas upon mm. which people project their own stuff yeah. onto. And it's gotta be really difficult. I think that that's probably very similar to what children feel when they're bullied mm. online. Mm. You know, you post something and then somebody can take something that you might give them and really distort it in such a way that comes back as very aggressive. You know, I, I pride myself on being a pretty decent human being. Like, I don't think I'm a bad person or anything. So I wouldn't, I'm not saying it's, you know, something actually bad that I would have posted or whatever. It's just, it's something as simple as they didn't like what I looked like in that photo. And I'm sure that getting that type of feedback does something to you, yeah. does something to your confidence. I, even, even Kendall Jenner, I'm sure, getting that type of feedback does something to you. 100%. How do you feel when you get sort of that type of critical feedback? I have moments of feeling like I'm breaking or feeling like I can't take it anymore. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it, it does feel it like it just, I can never do anything that right sometimes. Yeah. You can know never what I mean? please everybody right. all the time. So, so this, uh, the, this period of intense anxiety for you, um, it, it, it seems to me it's a perfect example of this sort of separation of yourself. Here's the 
Kendall at home, little young girl who is now being pushed on the world stage, mm. having to sort of play this role out, mm. knowing that your image is going to be out there mm. for everyone to consume. There's got to be sort of this and judge. So, how do you think that has uh, that that projection of you in social media? How has that affected your ability to really kind of feel anchored and connected to your? say, authentic self, for lack of a better word. Right. Well, it's just interesting because there are, first of all, so many images of me on the internet, ones that I'm fine with and ones that I don't necessarily like. You know what I mean? And a lot of the times the ones that I don't like are the ones that get more attention more because attention. they're the ones that everyone wants to kind of take and rip apart. So I think that I've become numb to all of that in a way. Mm. That took time, though, and that mm -hmm. took a lot of, like, talking to myself and, and, you know, hyping myself up. And because of social media, everything is highlighted. Everything yes. is heightened, whether good or bad. I, I feel like most of my social media anxiety is actually more the overwhelmingness of it all. Overstimulation, right. right? You realize that our brains are really not designed to be bombarded by all the stimulus that's coming our way all of the time. Right. What is actually like psychological, like what is happening? What's happening inside <laughs> like, our brains, right? Yes. I think that, you know, that the sense of overwhelm is very real and that there's a point in which the brain can no longer process all the information that's coming our way. And so there's an actual shutdown, very similar to what happens in a trauma response. Mm -hmm. It stimulates that sort of animal impulse of fight, flight, or freeze mm -hmm. response. And if we can't process everything that's happening, then we start to freeze and we start to feel like we're no longer in the world. Mm -hmm. So there is a sense of derealization that happens. And you know, I think with, with COVID uh, really keeping young people out of relationships mm -hmm. and social interaction. We don't have that human connection anymore, which I feel like we as human beings need it. Well, that's the ultimate irony, isn't it? That, yeah. that the internet can, the social media can really allow us to feel like we have millions and millions of friends in the world, when in reality, we could be very lonely right at mm -hmm. home. And it's the sense that you start to trade your real life for the imagined life. We're constantly being bombarded by a new role model or by a new standard of beauty or by a new yeah. a desire that we just can't quite be adequate enough to meet. And I think this is the dangerous part where a lot of young people really fall into a hurtful clinical depression yeah. that oftentimes leads into either self-harm, addiction. We've seen that yeah. addiction has really increased during this time or, you know, worst, uh, suicide. I feel like it's something that we're now like stuck in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like how do we now... There's no reversing. I hope that one of the things that we learned from this is exactly what you said, is that there is a need for us to be connected in real time. That kind of content is critical for our well-being. Yeah. It, it's, it's part of, it has to be part of our I think mental that's health. one of our tips of the day is go give someone a hug. So something that I'm asking all the professionals on this series is just some, I don't know, tips, tricks, tools that mm -hmm. you can kind of, that the viewers can take home with them, or yeah. they're probably already home, but <laughs> take away with them and really apply to their life or sure. their lifestyle? So I would say probably four tips. One is being aware of your intention when you engage in social media. Why are you doing it? Why are you connecting? Mm. Recognizing that once you um, put an image out there, you may not always have control over how that image is going to be consumed. I think third, recognizing that addiction uh, is very real in social media and that it operates very much like any other addiction. And so setting some limits, appropriate mm. limits and boundaries is really critical. And, and I would say lastly is set some time for yourself to really socialize with people. Yeah. Stay connected to those that love you yeah. and really recognize that no human being is an island. Yeah. We are all you know human beings who socialize and need to socialize in order to stay protected yeah well thank you so much thank you this has been thoroughly you. amazing i really have enjoyed being here with you i think it's interesting because a lot of our conversation about social media was how like overwhelming everything can be and i think even just talking about it was really overwhelming like it's almost a sense of validation hearing it from a professional or hearing it from a doctor of like okay i'm not the only one that's you know, dealing with these thoughts or emotions and, um, and how 
invasive it feels like in my life. But it's good to be aware of it all and it's good to talk about it and kind of let it out and then now you can be aware, process, and hopefully move forward.